dear students welcome to the fifth video of unit 4 in this video we will try to understand hypothesis testing through t test before we move into let us try to understand what is a t test dear friend t test is the most commonly used statistical data analysis procedure for hypothesis testing it is used to determine whether there is a significant differences between the means of two group that means a t test is a type of inferential statistics which is used to determine if there is a significant differences between the means of two groups which may be related in certain features the test is one of the many tests used for the purpose of hypothesis testing in statistics let us try to understand what are the different types of three, three different types of t tests available there are three main types of t test available an independent sample t test which compares the means for two groups a paired sample t test that compares means from the same group at different times and a sample test that tests the mean of a single group against a known mean that is what are different types of test t test available now the question arises what is the purpose of t test the t test is a statistics which is used to determine if there is a significant differences between the means of two group which may be related in certain features so the question which may arise in our mind why is it called as a t test t test was introduced in the year 1908 by william sisley gosset a chemist working for guinness brewery in dublin ireland student was his pen name gosset devised the t test as an economical way to monitor the quality of stout hence the name t test came into picture let us try to understand how we are going to calculate t test for our understanding t test is calculated by a formula t is equal to x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation upon root n before we move into the other aspect let us try to understand what are the various terms which are available in this case if you look at x bar is an average of sample mu is written as average of population which is divided by s s is standard deviation and n stands for sample size the formula the basic formula for t test stands at t is equal to x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation upon root n but if the problem is given or data is provided and if it does not have standard deviation in the data we need to calculate standard deviation if you look at standard deviation s can be calculated under root of summation x minus x bar divided by n minus 1 where n is sample x bar is average of sample and x is sample also if you look at at the bottom there is something written as which is called as standard error standard deviation by root n is also called as se means in certain cases if standard error is given we need not calculate standard deviation and have a direct calculation of t is equal to x bar minus mu upon standard deviation by root n let us try to understand how t test is used for hypothesis testing with the help of an example the example which is given for us to understand is the order brought by a salesman are recorded if in a particular month on different days following orders were found as 70 66 69 65 69 70 71 64 63 and 68 these are different 
samples which are given on different orders which are brought by the salesman on different days what we need to examine we need to examine whether the mean order brought in the month is different from 65 for t test use 5% level of significance is 1.833 means critical t test value is given for us and that value stands at 1.83 now from this let us try to find out what is the information which is given to us if you look at i have marked yellow color for the orders which were brought by the salesman on different days we term it as sample yes then we have something marked as red which we call it as average of population now the second question in this uh, problem do you find that standard deviation value is given if you look at here standard deviation is not given means we need to calculate the standard deviation moreover we also need one important thing which is denoted by n which is called as sample size in our case if you count those yellow marked numbers they are going to be 10 means the sample size is let us move forward as i said whatever was the data available in step number one it was my need to calculate average of the sample for 10 days different orders were given by the salesman so i wanted to calculate the average in step one. how the average was calculated average was calculated by summing 1 to 10 orders which comes to 675 i divided it by 10 which is 67.5 what is that that is what is called called as average of the sample similarly if you remember in the previous session i clearly told you that we need to find out what is called as standard deviation which is given as standard deviation is equal to summation under root of summation x minus x bar where, where x is sample and x bar is average of sample there are 10 sample returns which are available in a problem that is what i have listed near to it second column x bar i have written as something which is related to average sample you might be very clear how i have created an average of sample i need to find out that that is with respect to the average sample now next step as for standard deviation in the numerator part i need to calculate summation of x minus x bar square so the third column you see i have tried to calculate x minus x bar means column number one minus column number two i will get values whether they are plus or minus we should not bother but we'll write down whatever are the values which are available in it then as such we need to calculate x minus x bar this is what we need to put across hence the fourth column we have tried to calculate x minus x bar square which is given with respect to every row i have tried to calculate means if you look at the first row the square is 6.25 the second row the score square is 2.25 likewise we have calculated we have calculated and tried to put the summation at the end summation of all the values is 70.5 what does it mean it means that the standard deviation numer numerator part numerator point for part is been calculated which is 70.5 now at the bottom there is n minus 1 n minus 1 i have a sample size of 10 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 so square root of 70.5 divided by 9 i have got a value 2.79 means i have also calculated standard deviation now i have x bar i have mu i have standard deviation i have my sample available so i move forward to the last step 
that is what we need to put all this value in the t formula i repeat t formula is equal to x bar minus mu upon standard deviation divided by root n what i have done x bar is equal to average of sample which was available 67.5 we calculated 65 is the average of population given we have divided that upon standard deviation we have just calculated in the previous slide 2.79 and root n is nothing but sample size is root that sample size is 10 hence we have tried to understand it in the value which is root 10 root 10 the value becomes 3.16 if you look at the difference between in the values in the numerator is 2.5 i have divided it by 2.79 and root 10 is 3.16 which goes up so i have got now a calculated value the calculated value stands as 2.83 while the critical value which was given in the problem is 1.83 yes from this we can easily understand that the calculated value is more than the critical value that means null hypothesis which we have stated or we should state would be rejected and alternative hypothesis would be accepted let us try to put into null hypothesis is that the sample relationship occurred by chance and the other interpretation is called as alternative hypothesis which is generally symbolized as h1 but what and when it is to be accepted or rejected be very clear on that point point number one if the calculated t test value is less than the critical value we are going to accept the null hypothesis but in our case calculated value of t is more that means I am going to reject H0 and going to uh, will be accepting H1. Hence, H0 is rejected and H1 is accepted. That is what we need to. And then the question that we need to arise is, why do we need another hypothesis? In this case, why are we trying to do this? The purpose and importance of null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis are that they provide an approximate description of the phenomenon. The purpose is to provide the researcher on or an investigator with a relation relational statement that is directly tested in the research. So when we try to test, we would like to understand whether the hypothesis which we have made is to be tested and we are going to test it what is to be accepted and what is to be rejected that is what we need to understand this is in short using t test where the sample size is less than 30 we need to go for t test and depending upon the calculated t test value we would accept or reject the accept depending upon the value we would either approve or disapprove the null hypothesis that is what we need to understand with this, I complete my very small unit on what is t-test. Thank you.